Yo, what's up? Welcome to episode 18 of Throwback Hoops. My name is Rob Clayton, and joining me as always is Woody V. Woody, can you believe we're nearly up to episode 20, mate? A lot of hard work putting out one episode every week for the last four or five weeks, Robbie. But more than that, it's been a pleasure to be able to do this with someone who's like a brother to me. I love you dearly, man. Great work. Appreciate that, mate. And look, I was going to sort of mention it later in the show, but I could briefly see your hand being raised there. So can you show me that hand? Okay, so... For those um, that sort of don't know, so Woody and I were playing basketball last night, and just uh, explain to us what happened there, Woods. I uh, just got a pass that was at my feet, and it wasn't went, from me, was it? It wasn't from you, man. It wasn't from me. It's from AB actually. And as I okay. went to catch it, AB, one of our teammates, and when I went to uh, catch it, I kind of jammed my pinky um, into the ball as it hit the ground. So you know, these things happen sometimes. So how many weeks you out? Uh, probably a month, man. Let's see, but yeah. I'll be there cheering on from the sideline. So, yeah. All right. All good. I thought I'd bring it up. So, all right. I appreciate that, Wood. So, look, just a reminder where to find us, guys. Obviously, the, the video is up on YouTube each week. Please make sure you like and subscribe. And um, if you're listening to the audio of the podcast, it's available wherever sort of um, all podcasts are found. Um, so, we've got another very special guest this week. Um, so, look, it's with, with great pleasure that I introduce Andrew Canyon from the NBL Pocket Podcast. Andrew, nice. welcome, mate. Fellas, thanks for having me. I really no, appreciate pleasure. the opportunity. I, I noticed that you warmed up with another Andrew the other week. You had the and, Andrew Gaze, you know, yeah, some people may have heard of him. Now you've you got, got the real deal. You've got better hair than him anyway, so I'll play that. Yeah. <laughs> Please, he's got color. So yeah, Andrew <laughs> Canyon. It's great to have AC. you. So why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself there, Andrew? Oh, where to start, guys? So look, I am... Um, I'm a management consultant by day, but let's not worry about that because what I do by night is podcasting and uh, particularly around the NBL. I'm a massive NBL head, have been since 1987, following the uh, the Perth Wildcats originally. It's obviously the, the gateway drug. Um, but <laughs> since then, I've become a real fan of the NBL, the league as a whole. And I'll, I'll watch any and all of the games. I love them. Just love the Australian basketball style and the way they play. Um, so yeah, so this is why this is why us three get on so well. We're just like we built the same, you know. We all think the same. Mate, yeah. I've got to put up with one Western Australian every week on this show anyway. Now I've got to put up with two, huh? You know, <laughs> so right. I picked a good week for that after the Kings win last week. Oh we'll, hell we'll, we'll yeah, touch I on did. That later hell in the show, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, we'll touch on that. But um, uh, sorry, Andrew, keep going. I'll, no, and look, and I should point out like why, why, what do I do in terms of podcasting? I I host with with Joe Core the NBL Pocket Podcast. Um, I've had a few people say like, Joe used to do that by himself. And then where did you rock up from? Uh, it turns out I, I reached out to him and said, Joe, I really like your podcast. And um, at the time I was doing just a one by myself, just a, like learning the ropes. Mm. And I was like, I want to get you on for an interview because I, I like the way you break down the game. And we got along really well, um, made for a good podcast at my end. And then after that, we kept in touch. And then the, uh, do you remember, do you know the TBT? The, the basketball tournament. We do. Yep. Yeah. 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 So we, we decided we'd do a special podcast series of the TBT a couple of years ago. And so we just got really into it, watching like every game and then breaking it down and coming to come doing a whole podcast on every day, daily nice. TBT breakdown. It was freaking amazing. Um, and he's been trying to get rid of me ever since on the show and I just won't leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I stuck around for the NBL content now. Awesome. Well, it's great to have you there, Andrew. And um, look, I'm sure Joe wouldn't mind me saying this, but it's great to see someone from the NBL Pocket Podcast that actually has a normal in, a normal internet connection as well. So that's that's good. So <laughs> glad to see we got, got the green light. Mate, that was so like dial-up back in the late 90s when we had him on the show. But uh, <laughs> big shout-out to Joe there as well. But I no, appreciate it, mate. So um, all right. So look, we've got a great show ahead again this week. Um, so basically, we're going to showcase our jerseys as always. Um, yep. Get back into a little bit of Atlanta Hawks talk. Um, we've also got an NBL discussion. And, of course, we're going to finish off opening another classic pack of cards, which is what he's giving a bit of a tease there. So looking forward to do that one. So, all right. So, look, as we sort of do each week, we'll start off with the jerseys. Um, Andrew, do you want to start us off and, and show us who you're sort of wearing this week? Yeah, so I'm doing a bit of a cheat today, guys. I hope you don't mind. So, I don't know. First, I'll start off with the one behind me there. We've got the uh, – you can see that. We've got the Perth Wildcats uh, championship jersey um that one has has all the uh the player signatures on it although Very and while nice. i was at those games i was in the crowd when they won that that championship um 
I didn't actually do the hard work of getting all those signatures. Uh, that's actually one I won a contest from NBL League office oh, <laughs> somehow. Nice. Yeah. I, and they sent me that as a prize. I'm like, sweet. This is before I was doing all the podcasting. So there was no conflict of interest, right, guys? <laughs> yep. Um, no, none. <laughs> but that one, it's got to hang up because it, it's, it, I don't know, it must be shrinking in the wash or something, guys. I don't know. It just seems like every time I put it on, it's just a little bit, getting a little bit tighter each time. And Andrew, just a reminder for Woody. So Woody, so NBL championships, you know, I know it's not something that you're sort of that accustomed to being a Kings fan, and apart from those couple of years in the noughties when there was no salary cap for the Kings. But um, yeah, that's what we the Wildcats sort of do every couple of years. So yeah, yeah. settle down, man. Settle yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I was actually, I was hoping you guys weren't going to ask me which one it was because I'm kind of actually forgetting. I always re- rem- remind myself, is the one where we had Nate Jawai. I think that's the one. That is, this, a, yeah. I've got the Jawai in that same jersey, but it is hard when we win so many. Oh, it's so hard to keep Andrew. up. Yeah, it's like what ten? I think. 10, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, thought it's... you're not even a Wildcats fan in, anymore, Andrew. You're just an NBL fan. <laughs> I just appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate greatness. You know, wherever it may rest. Okay, just, just checking. So just checking. Rest just in checking. Perth. <laughs> um, I don't know if I should talk about my other jersey that I'm yeah, wearing. Yeah, why don't you give us? Um, all right, this is a super special one. It's a little bit of a cross promotion, if I can be so cheeky. So I do another podcast, which is more like a tech culture podcast called Hemispheric Views. Um, my other two co-hosts, one in Wollongong, he doesn't care about basketball. He's never been to a Hawks game. He doesn't give a stuff about him. And the other co-host lives in Portland, Oregon, in the US, and he doesn't care about basketball. So I thought the best thing to do would be to create a basketball jersey for the show. So I made yep. one for me and one for the other two hosts. The design, let me just see if I can show it here. Yeah. Designed by, everybody will know, Nick Tan. We do. Nick, Nick Tan, friend of the show, designed this and helped me get them manufactured. So I'll, I should cool. probably stand up. And yeah, stand up and give us a spin and let's, let's have a look, AC. So AC giving himself a bit of a plug here. Love it. Nice colors. Yep. Beautiful colors. Love it, AC. Looking good, man. Looking good. Looking fly, there we bro. Go. You got to be brave to wear a yellow uniform as well. So uh, I like that. There you go. Uh, very good, mate. I well, appreciate you showing us showing us those ones and telling a little bit of a story there. So, all right, Woods, we'll go on to yourself, then, mate. I know you did have a, a different jersey planned earlier in the week, but there was a bit of a, a wardrobe. Um, I don't know. It's gone missing, right? The one you wanted to wear. So, yeah. Why don't you tell us about the one you're rocking today? Yeah. So I've, I've got a 2007-8 edition, the last ever edition of the West Sydney Razorbacks home jersey. Um, and I'm wearing a Darnell Hinson jersey. So maybe as I get up, Robbie, you want to just speak on yeah, what the absolutely. jersey looks like? So Woody's rocking the very old school Darnell Hinson West Sydney Razorbacks jersey. So yeah, I really like that Look one. It's that. definitely not a jersey you see see around very often, is it, Andrew? It's pretty rare, I, that one. I love the lettering on it. It was back when the NBL uniforms mm. were distinct from one another. You know, that's a yep. real, real kind of that... that that rate. Cool colors too on that one. It's pretty unique, isn't it? Oh. I really liked it. And um, Darnell actually signed it. So just a little bit about that season um, and, and Darnell Hinson. Um, I was a season ticket holder that season. And if you remember the Razorbacks, um, Robbie and, and AC were really um, starting to dwindle in th- terms of crowd. Sydney were struggling to keep two teams in, in the league at that time. Everyone was going to Kings game. There's only like 500, 600 people at some Razorbacks game. So being a season ticket holder, um, Darnell got to know me pretty well. He saw me at every home game. And, and yeah, he was more than happy to sign and write a little message. Um, Thanks for coming to the games, Woody. Darnell with his with his number and whatnot, which was hey, was, was that cool. Homebush days or was that still Liverpool? In that yeah, no, Center? no, no, it was home, Homebush. Homebush days, Homebush yeah. days after Whitlam Centre. Yeah. And just a fun fact for you guys, he played alongside Damien Martin, Maddie Knight under Rob Beveridge there. And honestly, mm-hmm. that's where that whole connection started. And Beveridge then went over a couple of seasons later to to Perth and took with him Mardo and and Maddie Knight and um you know started the, the that great run there uh, with the Wildcats, right? Um and uh. Yeah, even Darnell Linson for a year went and played at Perth straight after uh, the season with the Razorbacks. Um, when the Razorbacks became the spirit that next year, Hinson went over to Perth and played under Connor Henry, just that gap year between when, when Beveridge went over. And Darnell had a 15-year professional career playing in the Dutch Basketball League, German Basketball League, French Basketball League. So, you know, he was a bit of a journeyman and, and built a pretty good career for himself, um, which lasted, you know, 
one and a half decades. And yeah, I really fondly remember those times and and that team, Robbie. So very yeah, good. And- yeah, it's definitely not a name I've been I've thought about for a while. I know we sort of we were speaking earlier and we were like, oh, that's right, he played that one season for the, for the Wildcats there. But I seem to remember he might have been an All NBL player on one of those teams. It might have probably been the West Sydney team once. Yeah, one, uh, and he also made that All Star game. You know, you showed that uh, mm. All Star jersey of Kevin Licious yep. on one of the previous episodes. Donnell Hinson was at Perth at that time, and he made the. I think was that the. What was, how did they do that format? I can't even remember what the format was. But Was it Americans against Australians? Yeah, I think it might have been yeah, Americans yeah. against yeah. international stars versus yeah. Australians or whatever. Hinson made that lineup. So. And if the NBL is listening, let's bring that back because I know everyone wants to see the All-Star game oh, come back. You know, absolutely. Three-point comp, but don't comp in a game. You know? It can't be that hard to organize that. Although maybe it is this year with all the, all the COVID issues with scheduling. But yeah, bring it back next season. Anyway. Agree. Just got to uh, say, pretty- Darnell Hinson, I, I have got a blank think, remembering him playing for the Wildcats. So I've looked up the stats and it was the <laughs> <laughs> and and I remember all the other players, Isaiah Victor and um Ben Knight, Luke Kendall on that team. Yeah. It was a dark it was it, if it wasn't for Sean Reddish that season, there would have been nothing worth watching. Um, it was in between that point, wasn't it? I think between 2000 and 2010 was when the Wildcats didn't really win a whole lot. So it was during that time. But I think yeah. they still made the finals that year. We had Hinson from memory anyway. Yeah, but, and, yeah. and Connor Henry as coach. Well, I don't know if anybody's ever heard me talk on Connor Henry, but I'm not a big fan. And it's all no, we've, we've, heard that, you, yeah. we've, we've heard you, we've heard you, AC. Actually, the funny thing was he had such a great year with um, West Sydney that Perth actually signed him for three years. But after the first year, they realized, oh, okay, big mistake. And they, <laughs> they, they agreed on, a, on on terms of a buyout, right? And he, that's when he went overseas and Beveridge came and took over, right? So, yeah. yeah. Nice. yeah amazing. Uh, good stuff, boys. Well, appreciate you showing those. So, look, I'll just go on to my two. I'm just using, uh, doing the usual sort of two. So, you can see the one I've got hanging over my shoulder there. It's a bit of a uh, random uh, Aaron Baines San Antonio Spurs jersey. So, I thought that was pretty topical this week. I know Baines, he's kind of been in the news a little yeah. bit. Um, definitely encourage anyone that hasn't read Brian Windhorse's um, recent article on ESPN.com about Baines. It yep. was very interesting. Um, I think Windhorse said he sat down for about six hours with Baines and sort of talked about a lot of sort of things with him. But I guess just a little bit of info on, on Aaron Baines. So he had an eight-year NBA career uh, playing for San Antonio, Detroit, Boston, Phoenix, and Toronto. Um, he won a championship with the Spurs in 2014. It feels like all these people have won some sort of ring with the Spurs that we've had on, on been showcasing their woods. So I guess that shows how good they hey, are. Hey, Robbie, you said had. Mm. Let me just stop you there for a second, right? Mm. <laughs> you said had. There's still a chance that that's Yeah, I know. I was going to go back to that. I was going to go back to that. Yeah, <laughs> okay. it's all good words. Um, right. And so, look, Bainsey played for the Boomers in the 2012, 2016, and 2020 Olympics, um, of course, before sustaining a shocking injury mid-game um, or basically sort of going to the bathroom, which – uh, basically, he fell and resulted in a severe neck damage, um, so, so severe nerve damage in his neck, which is is really unfortunate. As I said, read that article. It's quite sort of touching hearing some of the stuff and some of those thoughts that Bainsey sort of first had after that fall. You know, would he forget about basketball? You know, would he walk again? You know, I think he mentioned that someone in his family is a quadriplegic, so yeah. he was sort of very worried about those sort of things. But, yeah, absolutely would. Um, it is in that article that Bainsey would like to come back. Um, obviously, he'd probably love to go back to the NBA. Yeah. Might be a little bit tough at his age now, just given how you know he has been out of the game coming back from this injury. So, look, potentially it could be an NBL return. We'll sort of watch this space. But either way, just happy to sort of see Bainsey out and about. He's been attending a few NBL games sort of recently. So that's been been great to see the giant man there. So, yeah, shout out to Bainsey. Um, and look, the one I'm wearing this week, I'll just sort of just stand up and, and show that one. Um, I won't do any flopping or anything when I stand up, and then I'll, I'll tell a little story about this guy. So just one second. <laughs> yeah, so for all the... Yeah audience that can't see Robbie's wearing a Jesse Wagstaff 24 classic what year jersey do you know what year that is Andrew can you tell me oh it's I I net so what would that be that would be geez probably 11. what year is that 11 10, 2012 11? it's a 2012, 2012. It's actually yeah. a 30th anniversary uh, so a road jersey which is is pretty random I've got a whole wardrobe full of red Wildcats jersey so it's good to have the random white one there so look just a little info on Jesse um been with the Wildcats since 2009, which is pretty remarkable. Um, he's a six-time championship winner. I um, mean, just to just to let you know, there Woods. Um, so 2010, 14, 16, 17, 19, and 20. Um, and he's the only player in NBL history to compete in nine NBL finals, which is yeah. is pretty remarkable. There. So he's also won an NBL Six Man of the Year award. Um, he was an All NBL player in 2012. And look, I think more importantly, he's having a really good season this year. 
possibly, you know, the last couple of seasons he was starting to slow down, but he seems a little bit rejuvenated this year. Yeah, he's definitely. obviously driving to the basket well. He's hitting his shots. Um, he's playing his usual sneaky defense and, you know, annoying people and drawing drawing charges and stuff like that. So, yeah, shout out to, to Jesse Wagstaff. He's someone that I've absolutely loved over the years. Um, and Woods, you know, I like bringing something, a bobblehead or something like that if I've got it. So I know, I know, bro. Actually, one of my favorite Wildcats bobbleheads because it actually looks a lot like him. Check out that one. You do get some, it's that generic sort of look, but I don't know. I reckon that really looks like Jesse oh, there. Definitely. So, yeah, the long pretty, hair era. Pretty good the way they've done that one, right? Yeah, yeah back yeah. when so, he did have the long hair. That's it. Looks it. He certainly awesome. had a few awesome. hairstyles over the years too, yeah. hasn't he? So, yeah, so that's just a bit of a bit of a spiel on Jesse Wagstaff. So, and t- t- tell me, guys, when's the scout going to be out on Jesse that don't don't bite on the head fake? Because you know he's going to he's going to attack the rim this year, it's a bit just like that, isn't it? Yeah, and it's working for him, just driving past people at his age. So no, it's great to see. So, all right, we really appreciate that, fellas. Sort of going through the jersey. So we might just get straight uh, straight into part two of the show this week. And look, we haven't had it for a couple of weeks, um, and we're not just bringing it back because we're the form team in the league at the moment. But we're going to do a little bit of Atlanta Hawks talk. So, look, I guess just with the Hawks, the current record is twenty five and twenty six. Um, Hawks were on a seven-game win streak before losing to Toronto on Tuesday. But at the time of recording, today's Friday, the 4th of February, an amazing home win for the Hawks. Big over the, win, Robbie. The red-hot Phoenix Suns who had won maybe 12 in a row. 12 in a row, snapped the streak, yeah, man. Yeah. It's great to see it. I'm always going to love when I see Trey totally kicking Chris Paul's ass like he did today. He says, I absolutely can't stand Chris Paul, and I feel like I dislike him <laughs> even more after watching that game and some of his ridiculous antics today. Um, look, the only thing that might have soured that a little bit, and you probably didn't see it, Woods, because you were getting your, your finger tended to, but yeah. um, John Collins went down in the, about the last couple of minutes. It looked like he might have sustained a separated shoulder there. So Did he? he looked in quite a lot of pain. So hopefully that's not too bad. Um, but Fingers I guess we'll crossed, probably, man. I didn't, I didn't know that. Space. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a way to sort of sour it there. So yeah, Woods, what's your sort of take on this sort of last week or so? We're obviously we've been on a big homestand of late, but we're looking a lot better, aren't we? Yeah, firstly, Robbie, there's a bit of de- a bit of a deja vu feeling here. You know, uh, we're mm. following a similar trajectory to the one that we followed last season, right? Yep. Yeah, and look, I mean, one thing I'll say is um, the big trade. You know, I wouldn't say big trade, but since we did trade uh, Cam Reddish mm-hmm. and DeAndre coming, uh, DeAndre Hunter coming back as well, uh, which I know you're going to speak on a little bit, Robbie. But yeah, there, there has been a, a shift. I mean, our, our, def- our defense was a mess. So check this mm. out. I just want to give you a little bit of a stat uh, before the Reddish trade um we were the 28th in the nba allowing 113.1 points per 100 possessions right Mm -hmm. since reddish's departure and that's before the game that was just played today uh, and obviously the return of deandre hunter which um which has been over the last 10 or 11 games let's say we're now the 17th in the league so um to move up from 28 to 17th over that stretch it's so, so by no means have our defensive words been solved completely, RC. But we're, we're trending in the right direction, man. That's good to see, right? And this, absolutely. And yeah. it just shows you how tight the East is as well. We've been absolutely on fire this last week. As I said, we won, you know, eight out of all, yeah, eight out of the last nine games. We're still outside of the top eight there, but obviously trending in the right direction. You yeah, know, obviously man. one game under fifty percent now, and a lot of time to go there. But yeah, look, it was a very impressive game today. Definitely get a chance to to check it out tonight, Woods. I know you've obviously missed it, but yeah, look, going back to what you said about DeAndre Hunter. Yep. Look, as you know, I'm a huge fan of Hunter. I think it, I think he's really sort of the guy that sort of steers this team. Obviously, he's not an amazing offensive player. He's certainly capable. Um, yep. But his defense, I mean, you hear some of the, the teammates of his talk about it. Um, I heard Kevin Herter on um, the Ryan Rosillo podcast last week, and he was just raving about Hunter, just about his defense and saying basically he thinks he's you know definitely one of the top defenders in all of the NBA and probably not getting enough credit for that. So when you hear someone's teammate you know saying that, that obviously goes you know, against him sort of every day in practice or something, that's that sort of makes sense there. But, yeah, look, it's pleasing to sort of see him. You know, they're obviously looking a bit happier. As we said, fingers crossed. Yep, Woody's rocking the hat as well. Um, fingers crossed the, the John Collins news isn't bad. Um, we'll probably find out a little bit more about that. But, yeah, great to sort of see Trey playing like he did today, 41 points, and was just hitting, that, hitting huge shots in the fourth quarter. Just Yeah, I love watching the guy play. So good on the Hawks there for, for getting back on the, you know, obviously. And that's why we haven't talked about him a little bit of late because it might have been a little bit more negative and, and everything like that. But yeah. I think we're back anyway. So I hear right, that, well, Rob. I hear that. Thanks for that, Wood. So, look, next we're just going to go on to something a little bit more topical. And, look, to be honest, it's probably a little bit sad, isn't it? Um, it's just the news that sort of came out of um, of Utah this week about Joe Ingles. So, as for those that haven't heard, he basically tore his left ACL um, last week and he'll be out for the rest of the season. So, I guess, importantly, 
recently uh, with that news as well. Ingalls does turn 35 later this year and will be out of contract. Um, he was having a pretty ordinary season this year, let's be honest. He was averaging seven points, barely shooting 40% from the floor. So I guess I'll sort of throw it to both of you guys there. You know, what are your sort of thoughts on the injury? And, and do you think that could be the end of the NBA for, for Jingles? Andrew? Yeah, look, um, you, know, you guys both know I've talked to you. I'm not a huge NBA follower. I've got a limited amount of sporting budget and I spend it all on the NBL. Um, but, you know, Joe Ingles, you, you, I know enough to know he's been going around great. He's, I think he holds the franchise record for most number of threes, mm-hmm. I think. He does. Um, I think great career that has come out of nothing. You know, he wasn't – he was picked up off the scrap heap basically, wasn't he? Um, yeah. Great career, but I reckon this is the end for him. I'd say at 35 – that kind of injury got tough to come back from um, and the amount of effort that it will take to, to rehab that and to get back to a position where you can play and let alone play in the NBA. I just don't see it. I think teams seem so obsessed now with like getting the next big thing and building up potential and young guys. Why would you, why would you bring in an old guy that, you know, seemed to be on the fade? Anyway, I guess the only slight counter I'd maybe throw that out. Look, I'm agreeing with you, Andrew. I'm just trying to be difficult. But I guess for someone like Ingalls, <laughs> he's not someone that's really always relied on that athleticism as well. So, look, if he can come back and still have his smarts and still be a, have that ability to hit the corner three, that may give him a chance. I mean, obviously, we know he's pretty athletic. He certainly was early in his career, but with that career with the Jazz. So, yeah, I, I agree that I think it's going to be doubtful. But um, what, what are your thoughts on that, Woods? Yeah, I honestly believe that he will recover and he'll get one more short-term deal, maybe a one-year vets minimum sort of deal as a veteran off the bench. I mean, his teammates have talked about how he's kept such a positive attitude throughout this whole uh, injury and he's he's still talking to everyone, keeping everyone's spirits up, making everyone laugh in the locker locker room. I just want to read you one one tweet, guys, from Ricky Rubio. Now, remember these two, Joe and Rick, Ricky, have been friends for over a decade now, right? Mm-hmm. They were teammates at Barcelona in two, back in 2010 and obviously teammates again at the Jazz not so long ago. Uh, and, and Ricky Rubio, as we all know, has also got a torn ACL. He's, he's a bit mm-hmm. younger than Joe, but the two mates are going through the same thing at the moment, two veterans. And he said, love you, Hermano. We will be back at Joe Ingle 7. The key to success is playing the hand you were dealt like it was the hand you wanted. So what I think is these two having each other to have each other's backs, great mm. mates over time, going through the same injury at the same time, they'll drive each other. And just with Joe Ingles, he offers a lot off the court, not just on the court. I know what, what you're saying about his lack of production and whatnot, um, you know, but I just think he's he's got one more final act in the NBA. And then maybe I'll throw over to you, Andrew, and you can speak about his prospects of coming here and, and finishing off his career in the NBL. I know Brian Gorgian has come out recently and said mm. that, you know, I'm sure that he'd, he'd like to come and play a couple of years here to close out his career. So maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, yeah. And I would I would hope that if Joe Ingles is thrown an NBA lifeline, I, I just really hope it's not some cruddy team in the, you know, it, that is just going to be a terrible year and experience to go, go on. If that's the case, I would make the strong case that he should definitely come back to the NBL. Um, yeah, he's... It, what a great story it would be! It's not going to be the same income level, but surely he's socked enough away that he could he could suffer that. Um, I would love to see him in the NBL. You see, what we've done with Del, you know, it was Bogut and then Delivered Over. I think yep. Ingles is. I mean, he's at that Bogut level. I, w- yep. I would say oh, in terms of yep. marketability and mm. you know, able to leverage and grow the league with that. So I think it'd be a boon. Um, I imagine he would end up at a Melbourne team. I can't see it being any it'd other be a big way. arm wrestle between the, the two teams to see who gets him, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be interesting. I, don't, I think South East Melbourne, they have all the NBA ownership connections, don't they? Um, mm, but then Melbourne United have the, the deeper pockets, I would suggest. So it would be interesting. Um, one place we can probably guarantee he won't be going is Adelaide. Mm. Yeah, Just... definitely not. Yep, definitely not. Yeah, he's... <laughs> Which is sad, sad news for the people of Adelaide, but, you know, yeah. that's, uh, that's karma. Yeah, and I mean, it might be a bit nostalgic for him to start off at Southeast Melbourne and finish off at Southeast Melbourne. So that could be a little thing there, right? So, yeah, yeah true. Yeah. But, but either way, certainly not great news to come out, isn't it? You know, we're just no. talking about the Bane sort of stuff before, you know, obviously we've yeah now sort of got this Delhi, uh, sorry, the, the Ingalls news as well. So, yeah, obviously wish him a speedy recovery and, and hopefully we see him back playing some form of basketball next year. Hey, Robbie, yeah. both those guys, you know? Mm. Yeah. Bainesy and, and Joe Ingalls, two legends of the game. We wish him nothing but, you know, and, and a shout out to him because Success. he is he is a father of a child with autism, as am I. So uh, you know, shout out to him as well, dealing with those challenges on top of everything. Definitely, yeah, most, most deaf, AC, yeah. most deaf, yeah.
Nice. No, I appreciate it, guys. Um, look, I thought we might just go on to a bit of NBL talk next. Um, fitting that we've got Andrew on the show. We'll do a little bit more sort of NBL on this week's show. So, look, Andrew, I just wanted to sort of maybe start with you, mate, just to see, you know, what your thoughts have been, um, you know, with the season so far. Maybe who's impressed you and maybe something is, uh, let us know something good that you feel the NBL's done and also maybe something that they've, you don't like what they've done or you don't agree with. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank, thanks. Um, the thing about the NBL this week is, this year is it's super hard to get a read on what exactly is going on, who's playing well, who's going to turn up, for, you know, and play well in a game. You just got no idea. The tipping, the idea of a tipping competition this year is useless. Like it's always hard in the NBL, but this season is just totally nuts. Yeah. Um, which makes it makes for fun, you know, because you never know what's going to happen. Um, so it's competitive and interesting. Um, so in that regard, it's good. But then you've got the chopping and changing, and every week it's like, here's the fixtures, and then no, the fixtures are gone. Um, and I think I've got, I want to give credit to the NBL for whoever is planning those fixtures because they must be, if they have any hair left, oh my goodness, that's that has got to be the hardest job in yep. sport right now. Because you think about, I mean, they're, they're booking venues, they're booking flights, and then it all gets slammed, and they got to re- rethink it all. Um, it's a lot that goes into that. So mm. shout out to them for uh, for maintaining it. If that, if that person's probably going to be looking for a new job at the end of the year because they'll, otherwise they'll be on stress leave. Um, something good. I've got a few things here about the good, uh, the good, and I think most of it is around the game presentation. Yep. Um, I think they've really improved the TV production level this year, and I think it, it probably helps cool. switching over to ESPN. I don't know if you guys have picked up on that. Obviously, the halftime stuff is, is a lot yeah, definitely. Tighter. Yep. Um, and they're still working the hub, and I think we probably all agree the hope the hub is not ideal, but it's done a lot better that now. What do you, mm. you guys have thought? Yeah, I feel like I'm getting more used to it now, and probably they are as well, I guess. Yeah. And in, in in the nature of the world we're in right now, travel is a little bit more difficult, so they might have to stick to these hubs for a while. But I like that they've got like your your sideline reporter at every game. I like mm. Anthony Stewart's doing all the Hobart games yeah. at the moment. So the most Aussie cool. man in the world. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, I like that they've got someone on site at least as well. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and just on that with Anthony Stewart, having the Jack jumpers, they have been a breath of fresh air. I oh, love, yeah. I love everything the organization is doing. I love the style of play that they've adopted. Um, it's a real sort of, you know, um, underdog story because yeah. then they're always outmatched talent wise. Mm. Um, but they just they just keep pushing on, and I just really love it. And Scott Roth, like he's, I love that guy. That I was love good Scott last Roth, week man. seeing that reaction. Love it, yeah. It? Just yeah. that emotion and passion that he brings to that uh, that city, not just that team, you know. He, yeah, and, and the crowd feed off him as well. So, mm. totally agree, Andrew. Love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. And on the court, I would say the thing I like the most, and I know it's a bit controversial, but I like the coach's challenge. Mm-hmm. I wish, and I actually want it to be expanded because I feel like. There's opportunity. There's there's issues where something will go wrong, but it's not a challengeable circumstance. Yep. Mm. And it's frustrating because you're like, that's where you actually need it. So they end up blowing the coach's challenge sometimes on some you know half-assed call because they've got it late in the fourth quarter and you might as well give it yep. have a crack. What about one a half maybe? How would you, would you like that idea rather than one a game like one a half type thing? You use it in your second half, it kind of resets. I don't know. Like it's. Yeah, it could, that could be worthwhile. And maybe you don't, you don't get your time out back on the first mm. half one or something like that. Um, but a lot, at least they're innovating. Um, so, it, you know, full points for them in, in trying that. The other thing they need to do is they need, they need some 4K cameras because these, <laughs> these replay centers running at like, you know, 1080p at 50, 25 frames a second or whatever we got, it's not enough. Yeah. Whose finger did it go off? I have no idea. And it, it amazes me that you look at the, the quality of the NBA presentations yeah. and stuff and just the clarity of their image compared yeah. to what we have at the NBL. It's all money, yeah. I suppose, but that would be... I'm, you can, I'm you can definitely see the difference though, Andrew, between the NBA and the NBL, right? Like it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the NBA stadiums and the way they produce the, the video packages now, they, they look like games, you yeah. know, like, like video games. Just yeah. so amazingly crisp. Um. The other good thing, this is a little bit tongue in cheek, but uh, guys, have you seen any problems with decals? No, we haven't. We haven't heard about them this year at all, man. They were the talk of the town last season, AC, right? <laughs> decals, right? Decals, decals. I don't know how I meant to say it. <laughs> but, yeah, that's um, a good point. Yeah, they've just so obviously they've they've changed something quietly, mm. 
and you're just not seeing those same slips. So I think that's yeah. well done. You know, a, a, a fault was identified and they fixed it. So you can't ask for more than that. Um, so I think overall, I think the league is, is going well. I think it's a tough market and a tough environment to be to be dealing in. Um, which I may, really like that point you raised as well, things. Andrew, about the about the schedule. People, I, I totally agree with that. You know, we saw even this week it was I think two games that were shifted. Sydney's opponents changed for Sunday, so you're right. The amount of work and everything, and you know, bookings and planning that sort of must go into that stuff. I see they've just released the schedule for the next few weeks now. So yeah, I agree. That's definitely something I think they are doing well, and it's good that they're flexible. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Do you want me to tee off? Is it time to tee off now? Should we do talk about what's well, going on? Well, I'm just going to get Woody just to briefly just annoy us about his thoughts on the game last week. But go on then, Wood. So we attended the, the Sydney-Perth game last Sunday. You came with my family. Normally it's a game when my family sort of goes home smiling, but it was, it was your turn this week, uh, last week. Um, what were your thoughts on the game, um, the brawl that happened? We're still waiting to find out the, what uh, the penalty is going to be for Matt Hodgson there. But what were your thoughts on the game and, and obviously what's well, the well, uh, Sorry, breaking news. I just had to just refresh Ooh, the go. NBL page. Two there games. Is, there is an outcome on Hodgson. Uh, There'd not be more than two. Speak on it, AC. Speak on it. Okay, Perth Wildcats Hodgson handed a three-game ban of which two have Ooh, been suspended. Okay. Um, so they, go, they match him with the Josh Childress um, – Assaulting Jesse, Jesse Wagstaff. So that, that's the same penalty, apparently. But anyway, all good. Thanks, then, right. Andrew. That is good breaking news. But... That is. All right, Woods, what did you think of that one? Well, I mean, I, I think that's somewhat fair. I thought he'd get around two games, but whatever, mm-hmm. you know. What I did mean... I call it at the time, Woods? What did you call it at the time? A clown move, yeah. Oh, and that's clown move. The yep, bias yep. Wildcats fan like me. So, that, yeah. that's, but I mean, speaking of the game, it was a really good game, right? I, I kind of had a feeling that we would win, right? Uh, I know that it's it, it's it's tradition for us to go and the Wildcats to win over the last five years. I can only think of maybe two, three games where the Kings have come up on top. Yep. But you know, Jalen Adams is playing really well. Jarrell Martin is playing really well. Um, and 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 I know AC and JC Joseph. Uh, had a few things to say about Chase Buford in the past. And I said, just sit, just wait. You know, give the guy some time, right? And I think um, he's got this team playing really well. We're on a on a nice uh, streak here. And I think two games away from getting into that top four, you, you don't get a win against Perth very often. So really heartwarming to see. And uh, uh, the crowd was decent, actually, you know, to, to come in for, for that Perth game, Robbie. But uh, yeah, and I don't mind a little bit of that argy-bargy as long as it's within reason. You know, it, mm. it adds a little bit of flavor. Uh, I don't know what DJ Vasilovich said. <laughs> that really ticked off Maddie he's got Hodgson a bit of, so He's got much. a bit of a slappable face, though. Let's let's face it, right? He's got that kind of look about him. I don't think oh. it's... Apparently, he didn't say much duty to Hodgson that resulted in going at him twice. But, yeah, it so was a dumb one thing play, you like. one thing you said to me when you were sitting next to me in that seat, were, and I, Andrew, maybe you can speak on this, and, and it's not being spoken about that much, Chase Buford jumping in, right? Mm. You know, you guys yeah, speak I'll, on that, I'll right? speak on that, Woods. I, I wasn't impressed by that, to be honest. Um, I just don't think coaches have got they, – they don't have the right to run up to, to close to opposition players. You can grab your own players, pull them back by their jerseys, do whatever you want to do. But, you know, we're talking about a little guy running on the court, you know, basically a seven-foot guy in Hodgson. I mean, if he'd have swung around defending himself and maybe connected Buford with an elbow or something else like that, it would have been a whole sort of world of pain and, and trouble there. So I, I didn't like that personally. I don't know what you thought about that, that part, Andrew. Yeah, I didn't like it either, and I think that's probably it stems to one of my whole criticisms of Buford. I think I think he's, there's a level of immaturity still with him. You know, he's still a young guy, still mm. figuring things out. Um, he's only in, he's, he's sort of the sa- same peer as some of his players. Mm. Yeah. Um, so at that age, I actually, as somebody that age in that environment, I'm not surprised he ran out, right? But somebody with a few more years under the under the belt, mm. a few grey hairs in the temples, he would have probably chosen a better option i didn't like it either i'm amazed he didn't get cited um he pretty lucky hardly got spoken ago. about either i was surprised no, that, about that's that. what i was saying yeah. like yeah like first thing you said to me is like what is buford doing your brother was texting us about it yep. and andrew obviously noticed it as well but it's mm. not been actually spoken about in the media or anywhere that, that no so he's really right, dodged yeah. he's dodged a bullet yeah. on that one yeah yeah um but yeah i think hopefully he's still learns from it himself anyway. And I think that, I think like you said, Woody, it's like a maturation process for this guy yep. as he's coaching in this league. He came in with probably some G league ideals mm-hmm. and he's sort of figuring out that the, the NBL ain't the G league and he's, he's making those adjustments. Yeah. 
Good call. No, I, I appreciate you pressing on, on that one, boys. So, Woods, why don't you bring up the, the slides for this week? Obviously, the um, there's been one game already and the, the round continues tonight. Um, as I said, we're recording on the Friday. So I thought maybe we can just sort of go through those a little bit and, and do you want to maybe talk us through those, Woods, and maybe Andrew and I can sort of give a few thoughts? Or? Yeah, so let's just quickly talk about the, the game Wednesday night. Huge upset, New Zealand versus Lawara. Good is that for a my sprint, that score or? That's not right, is it? That is right, man. Good for my Sydney Kings. But yeah, you guys speak on that quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Very impressive effort by New Zealand. I think um, Illawarra has got a few issues lately. I don't think they're looking as, as great as they sort of were playing. So I was actually pleased to see New Zealand get that win. Obviously, they've been really struggling before that. So good on them for getting that win. I'm starting to wonder if this is the first time that Gorgian may have lost a team. Mm. Like, are they still picking up what he's putting down? I'm not sure. I'm mm -hmm. worried. I'm yep. worried. Agreed. Yeah. Imagine we get a finals this year with no Wildcats, although that won't happen and no Gorgian. So the Wildcats streak would be over and the Gorgian streak would be over. That would just be incredible. But I don't think it will happen. But anyway, just a little bit of food for thought. But Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What it does is make things a little bit interesting now because we always thought that that top four was locked in. But now you've got a bunch of other teams that got a chance to challenge, including my Sydney Kings who are playing tonight at the time of recording on uh, – Friday, the 4th of February, we've got the Kings versus the Jack Jumpers tonight. So what are your thoughts, guys? Um, you know what my tip is for tonight's game, but uh, maybe I'll throw it over to you too. I think Tasmania are absolute special, so that's my pick for that one. <laughs> yeah, I, on I love own. I reckon Tassie, they'll pull it up a plucky fight, um, but it'd be a brave man who'd think that um, Majet and Adams are going to play as well as again as they have been, given current mm. form, you know, their ups and downs. And I just think Sydney Kings has just got too much firepower. Um I think Xavier Cooks will have a bit of a field day with McIntosh. Um, and like Jalen Adams is a stud, so watch out. So Kings for me. Robbie's still not sold on Jalen Adams, is he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he showed a little bit the last few weeks, but I just I feel well, like... What I do you want, man? Yeah, I know. I know. He was double. great then, but Jeez. I just want to, I want to see some consistency from him there, I guess. But that's it. But, oh. you know, I love, love Majet. I like the way he's been looking a lot better the last few weeks. But, yeah, and I like the way Adams has been, but just want to sort of see it maybe for all four quarters. So. I think he's he's traveling down the right the right direction. What are you what are you, what are you, what are you doing here, man? Like, I'm not a Kings guy, right? But I see a talented player, and your your boy Rob is not giving you much. Hey, he's yet. a tough man to please. He's a tough man to please, Drew. So what 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 we'll what we'll do is we'll ask him in a few games, right? Yeah, you know? yeah. Give me a few yeah. more games to come around with him, right? I think I'm just grumpy because I didn't like what happened in the game last week. But yeah, give me a few <laughs> more games. Yeah. All right. So let's let's move on to the next one. Then we got the Sunshine Stoush, as they like to call it. I hate that name, by the way. But um, I'm gonna go with. If I think Scotty Machado might be back for this Is one, that right? but okay. yeah, I think it's it, he's very close to being back. They said la, last um, yeah, I'm going to go with Cairns, but anyway, uh, Andrew, maybe you have some further news on on Machado and, and give us your tip for that game. Um, so. I haven't heard I haven't heard of Machado. I'm curious about Moss as well. Is he ever going to suit up for for Brizzy? Um, he's played a couple of games now, Moss. Yeah, yeah, just very so limited I minutes. Haven't yeah. seen much of him, but um. Yeah. Look, I'm going to tip Brisbane on this one just because I don't think um, Franks is going to have such a terrible game a second time around. Took the words um, right out of my mouth. Yeah. No, nah, sorry, Robbie. No, nah, no, so, I yeah, agree. Brisbane. Franks is very ordinary, so I think he'll step up, and I, I think probably Brisbane will have a bit too much for him this week. All right, let's move on. Uh, Southeast Melbourne versus Perth at, at John game of the Arena. Week. Yep. Yeah, take it away, Robbie. What do you reckon? Yeah, very much looking forward to this one. I know we've got Southeast, I think, next week as well, the Wildcats. So it's probably two weeks in a row where we're playing them there. Um, yeah, I'll look, I'll say the Wildcats. I, you know, I think I did actually pick Illawarra to beat them last week when we won. So I'm not going to pick the Wildcats every week, but I think we might match up pretty well against them. I think probably the loss of Hodgson against sort of some of those bigger guys for Southeast could be a bit of an issue. But um, I like the, the Law and Cotton combo to get the Wildcats over the line there. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting. Is Joe Chi playing? Because that'll think be. Joe a, may be back this week. And that'll be yeah. a big. If if mm. if he's out, that sort of nullifies the Hodgson being out yeah. of impact. Um, I think Glidden's out as well. If that counts for anything at all, I don't think it does because the guy never hits a three anyway. Yeah. So what's the point? Um, probably just makes it worse because you get more time for other players. <laughs> um, I would still tip Southeast Melbourne. Yeah, I'm with you, Andrew. Definitely, Drew. I'm going southeast yeah. Melbourne on this one as well. Um, now, S Sunday, one o'clock at the at Kudos Bank Arena. Hopefully, uh, I'm good to drive and I can go and, and watch the game there. Sydney versus New Zealand Breakers. I think um, we got a real point to prove after that last home game versus the Breakers. And I think yeah. on the back of the win against um, Tasmania, which we're going to get tonight, uh, we will uh, 
will take care of the breakers at home. Hey, Woods, I know Cairns is your second team there, but I think that's going to be a lot better game to watch sitting against New Zealand. You get to see, you know, all the, the young stars, guys for New Zealand. You get to obviously see some of the, the talent they've got on that roster. So I think that should be a decent game. Um, Yeah, I'll probably take Sydney in that one, though. This is a tough one to pick, right? Because you've got mm. the Kings who coming back. It's a home game, but they're coming off travel. you got breakers who, you know, they played really well, but is that normal? I don't know. I don't know what. So... You know what? I'm going to tip upset. I'm going to get breakers. Thanks, Drew. Thanks, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> and there ends my uh, guest appearance. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good, man. Um, you guys got your tips in this week, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All good. Yep. All right. Uh, Melbourne versus Tasmania. We've got on same same day, Sunday. Yep. As well. Mm-hmm. Who we got there? It's pretty straightforward, that one. Yeah, I think Melbourne. Melbourne would be pretty, pretty special for that one. Yeah, yeah, they're going to be yep. pretty upset about losing to Adelaide, and uh, I think that should be a a one sided affair. I think Melbourne could blow out Tasmania there. And Chris Goulding, after going nine for fourteen, <laughs> um, I feel sorry for whoever's going to be guarding him this week. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, Majet's, gonna, Majet's going to have Delhi, you know, yep. hounding him the whole time, so mm-hmm. he's not going to have a fun game. Too cool. Uh, exactly. Um, I would actually say this game, um, this very final game, which is um, at the Winning Entertainment Center on Monday to close out the round, is going to be a really important one for Illawarra. Mm. And I think they might actually get this one done at home. So I'm going to tip Illawarra, guys. Over to you guys. Yeah, I mean, I like that game as well. I mean, you know, I sort of said maybe Southeast and the Wildcats could be game of the round. This one's obviously very much up there as well. Um, I think, yeah, Illawarra definitely need this win, don't they, this week with the, the up and down form they're showing. So, yeah, I'd say they might get it together and, and, and win this one. Yeah, I picked this as my uh, my my game of the round on NBL Pocket Podcast. Um, I'm going to say Southeast Melbourne are going to get this one, and they're going the Illawarra Hawks are going to be in a world of pain. And so you're saying be... Gorgian could be in trouble there, Andrew? Or? No, no, no. He's, he's safe. <laughs> safe on, I want to say controversial. Safe as houses, but they might have to start playing Emmett Nah. Although he's going over to play for the Boomers, so mate, mate, play AJ not. Ogilvy a little bit, man. If you got trouble, you know, like with the with the centres that you're playing, Ogilvy maybe deserves a bit of a run. He's a leader, veteran, been in the league a little bit for for, for years. So maybe play him a little bit more than you are at the moment. I don't know. That's just a thought. Right? Re- could, I mean, yeah. this Duop Reef is um, they're struggling when he's on the court. I d- I don't like. He it's looks really he looks for his shot, um, mm. but it's not going well for him. I, I yeah. yeah, it's pretty pretty messy with with Reith at the moment. Not showing what he did for the Boomers. He started off so well this year too, but yeah, he hasn't seemed like the same player the last few weeks. But yeah, I think the minutes were a bit up and down, weren't they, in that game on, on Wednesday night? You know, Froling didn't play as much as normal. Reith was in and out. I think Ogilvy got in at the end when it was garbage time. But yeah, all right. No, I really appreciate that, boys. I think definitely some good games this week and looking forward to watching another game tonight as well. So, all right. I think you're right, Andrew. That last one would be the game of the week. So, yeah. Yeah, you would say that, Woods. Anything against the Wildcats. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Andrew, it's that time on the show that, you know, I know you're, you're a regular sort of, you know, listener of the show and you've seen how excited Woody gets. So this is where we're going to rip open an old pack of uh, NBA cards and, and sort of give a few facts there. So what do you got for us this week, Woods? Brand new pack, Robbie, and uh, it's the 93-94 Tops edition. And you were telling me off air something special you remember about these cards. What were they? Yeah, what was that? Well, what was a couple that? of quick stories, these ones. So I know there's like a, a gold sort of version of each card of, of every card, and there's one in each pack. So there'll be like a regular sort of card, and then there'll be like a gold version. Um, as I mentioned to you as well, Woods, I remember these cards well. Um, had a trip to America with the oldies when I was sort of in I was like year nine or year ten or something like that. Um, went to a card shop in New York and actually bought a box of these actual cards. Um, got back to the hotel room. My oldies had some Broadway show booked out, so they gave me some money for room service, and I sat there just eating unhealthy food and ripping open cards all night. So it was amazing. So yeah, looking forward to see who we get in this pack. And our special guest Andrew Canyon says he's not a fan of the NBA, but he does say back in ninety three, ninety four, he was mad a fan of the NBA. So they were, and those cards were currency. They were, they were, they were I, I got into the cards a little bit, but I, I took a different angle on it all because everybody was trying to collect the Jordans and, you know, that kind of thing back in the day when I was of that age. And um, so I was just like, I'm just going to, I'm going after all the, the loser white guy players, you know? So I wanted the Kurt Ramesses. I wanted the, yeah. Um, oh, I can't remember all the names now, but uh, you know, it was always, if the guy looked like he didn't belong in the NBA, that was the guy I wanted. Tom Talbot. <laughs> <laughs> All the all the big white stiffs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's plenty of them. Yeah, well, Utah, Utah Jazz was full of them. Yeah. Greg Ostertag. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> nice. No, all right. To it. So, 
I'm a bit hampered today, guys, with the one hand. So just oh, yeah, that's going to be hard for you, isn't it? Yep. Um, and don't steal all the limelight, Robbie, like you always do. You know, give, well, I'll give, just leave it all to Andrew if you want. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh-huh. All right. One of our favorite Atlanta Hawks, left-hander. He could contort Stacey, his body. Man, Augman. Stacy the, the plastic, plastic man, Augman. What a great card too. I love that one. The best nickname in the NBA. It is. It definitely was, wasn't it? Yeah. Who's he dunking on there, Woods? I can't quite see there. Sam Bowie. It is Sam Bowie. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that never dunked? seems to go well for Sam Bowie, does it? Yeah. Do you reckon he dunked it or do you reckon he got blocked? Nah, if that was a plastic man, he would have thrown that down. On oh, hard, yeah. man. And yeah. Robbie's showcased his jersey on the show previously, Andrew. So yeah. awesome, right? One of our top 10 Hawks of all time, right? Definitely. Both of us. So Definitely. Yeah. Terrific. Okay. Um, New York City point guard. We've pulled this card before. This is uh, who? Is he number 13? Houston Rockets. Oh, New York. Works oh, for Kenny NBA. Smith, the Jet. And Kenny, the Jet Smith. Oh, that oh yeah. It's an old school Rockets jersey. He's, he's just looking that, thin there, isn't he? He's got that flat top as well, man. Mm. You know? Yep. Just a casual action shot. You know, just, just <laughs> surveying the court, seeing where the options are. Nothing too Hey, Wood, show us the back of one of those cards. What do we got? We get another photo or anything? Or? Yeah, and, and some stats going back oh, a while, yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Right. All right, remember this guy, backup guard on the Spurs to Avery Johnson for a while. Left-hander, I think, from memory, Robbie. Chris what? Whitney. Oh, yeah, geez, that's going back a little bit. Yeah, I think he might have played for the Clippers as well back in the day. But, yeah, don't have a lot of info on Chris Whitney. But... Jeez. He was left-handed, wasn't he, from memory, Rocky? Uh, Robbie? Yeah. Mm, I don't I'm know. not 100% sure on that one. We'll, we'll just say yes, right? <laughs> okay. That would have been back in the, what, the Alamo Dome days of mm. the Spurs. And it, was, and it was always, like, sort of curtained off, wasn't it? Yeah, like stadium. giant stadium. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of the most exciting guards ever. He was on that um, Warriors team with uh, Chris Webber. Um, and then Chris Webber got traded. He stayed around for a while. Um, had the famous incident with PJ Carlissimo. Played for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Spree. Who am I talking about? Latrell Sprewell. We're killing nice you, man. Look <laughs> <laughs> well, the guns on it. If you got strangled by him, you would feel it. Oh, uh, yeah. He was amazing to watch, wasn't he? He was just like a highlight reel after every game, wasn't he? He was. Do you remember that play he had, Woods? He was on like, uh, I think it was the left of screen. He was on the baseline. He kind of drove in and just did this crazy fake and just went, I forget who it was against, but it just amazed me back in the day. Vividly, I remember. Yeah. Okay. uh, uh, Sorry, I just want to say, that's got to be one of the great court announcer names as well, right? If you're you're an MC court announcer and you get to say, Latrell Sprewell. Could so you can, say, you can right? hold that spree well too, can't you? And make it sound good. Spree well. That yeah. is dope, man. Classic I gotta agree. Name. Gotta agree. All right. Point guard played for the Dallas Mavericks originally, and then moved to New York later in his, as a veteran. Um, you Derek know, Harper. Derek Harper. Exactly. Oh, that's Derek. Yeah, that's Harper. someone that was um, definitely a shoot first point guard as well. Yep. I think he's still associated with the Mavs, isn't he, Woods? I think he might be like one of their commentators yeah. or something else like that. But yeah. This is a backcourt heavy pack you've pulled. It is, isn't it? Where's the bigs? And and should we just say as well, we haven't had any coaches yet. So Woody, you've you've been warned, right? If you get a coach, just don't assume that they're dead like you do with every coach. Unless no, 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 man. The, unless you get Bill Fitch. So no, RIP to no, Bill no. Fitch. We I ain't speaking on. Today. I ain't speaking on right, coaches, we'll homie. I ain't speaking on coaches. You know. All right. Uh, small forward. Um, one of the most talented players ever. Cut Dominic short by. Wilkins. You know, cut short by injuries, cut short by injuries his career. Grandma Ma, as we oh, call him. Oh, the great man. Larry Johnson. Johnson. Oh, straight, out of, straight out of UNLV. What is that yeah. card as it's well? It's a special insert future scoring leader card. So, oh, man. Hey, what are they listing his height at back there, Woods? Because he was one of those guys that was all variations of his height. 6'7", I got. Yeah. Yeah. So he's been listed anything from 6'5 to about 6'10". So interesting. One of my best mates, Simon, we he was obsessed with Larry Johnson. And Larry Johnson could do no wrong in his eyes. Him and the Hornets, that he loved them so much. We used to play NBA Jam, and uh, he would always pl- play as Larry Johnson. <laughs> Never ending. Larry Johnson, Morning, and Muggsy Bugs, the three guys you could use in NBA Jam mm. T, right? So yep. if I'm not mistaken, the first pick in the 1990 NBA draft. That sounds right to me. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's a good card. I like that one. Mm. Okay, stocky point guard, played for a few teams. You know, um, you can 
This is his Celtics card. Uh, played for Miami. Sherman Heat Douglas. Well. Sherman Douglas. Man, how did he guess this, Andrew? I didn't say much. I just said stop. I don't the know. This is what I do. Impress him. You know. Scotty point guard. It was a great clue. Yeah, yeah I like it. <laughs> yeah, the Shaman 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 knowledge. <laughs> I am giving pretty good clues today, though. You got to say, I like it. Yeah. yeah. No, he had a decent career, Shaman Douglas. For yeah, sure. definitely. Except for the magic that he's uh, just fending. Scott Skiles, by the looks. It, it is indeed Scott Skiles. <laughs> Let him go. <laughs> yep. And well, the all time um, assist in a game, thirty yeah. assists in one game, still holds the record, man. It? I'm yeah. surprised that that record hasn't been beaten with the way the NBA is yeah. played these days, actually. I think guys. Rondo got close to me a few years ago. He had like 25, maybe yeah. 24 or 25. But yeah, yeah. 30 is pretty hard to beat. All right. This is a name I, I don't, I can't, I remember the name, but it's the one I haven't heard in years. He played on that team with Larry Johnson and, and Alonzo Mourning, LaRon Ellis. Wow. Former LA Clipper as well, LaRon yeah. Ellis. I remember him. Yeah, he was yeah. A, maybe a power forward, I'm going to say. Um, Right. He's a forward, yeah. Forward, yeah. Yeah, he was pretty decent. Six foot eleven power forward, yeah, for yeah, sure, man. Yeah, he was yeah. A power forward, and he yeah. did play for the Clippers, Rob. See, that nice. seems like one of the cards I would have looked to collect back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> nice the random like, Who's that guy? <laughs> hey, where's our gold where's our gold card? Doesn't come up yet, does it? Wasn't there's it one, there's one oh, every yeah. pack, isn't okay, it? Okay, all right. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe mm-hmm. it'll come soon. All right. All right. This is a name I haven't heard in a while. Mavericks forward, Dougie Smith. Wow. Doug Smith, I like that guy. Yeah, he was decent, wasn't he? Doug Smith. I don't know. Um, is, is, is he, he was a big a guy as well. In that photo? Yeah, what's the go with that? Couldn't you? <laughs> couldn't they find anything better? <laughs> Maybe hilarious. he was injured or something that season before. Yeah, Any fun facts about Dougie Smith? Mm, nah, I don't have much for him. I just remember him on that, you know, wearing that green sort of Mavs jersey they had back in the day. But nah, not much else on him. There you go. All right, left-hander, <laughs> one scored, eight points in like. 30 seconds for the Nuggets. Oh, Rodney Rogers. Rodney Rogers. I've got that jersey as well in one of the wardrobes, the Rodney Rogers Nuggets jersey. Yeah, he was a very handy player, wasn't he? He was that sort of big guy that could really stretch the court and everything. And and we mean big, right? What's his weight listed out in that photo? 250, 260? 260, 260, yeah. yep. And at Woods, I'll impress you as well. I think that's a bit of Pete Chilcutt from the Sacramento Kings on the front of that card. With it, it is. It is mistaken. indeed. It is Pete indeed. Chilcutt, yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm surprised Andrew doesn't have a few Pete Chilcutt cards. Pete Chilcutt would <laughs> hanging out, hanging well, out it? His, Yeah, if we go right into his like. That was my gold card equivalent. Um, <laughs> do you reckon that he, he's like Lamar Patterson is his modern day equivalent, Rodney Rogers? Ooh, good call. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, good call. call. It's a good yep. call. Highly good skilled, call. just a, a few problems at the buffet table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right where is this gold card i think that gold the gold card was the larry johnson one right but is no? it gold you'll see at the bottom you'll see like a special gold bit that makes it stand out on like the font maybe the bottom bottom front of the card or something okay i'll have a look in a second Robbie. Yeah. but all right um okay one of your favorite point guards we talked about uh you've got his boston celtics jersey just under six foot he performed on the right, basketball, basketball rap album Dana Barros. Dana Barros. I like that Philly jersey he's wearing back then too. Yeah. yeah. We seem to have got his car quite a few times. So right? many times, like man. Three or so four times. Many now, times. Maybe. Yeah. I really like these tops cards, the way they look. They, they look all right, don't presented they? beautifully, right? Yeah. It's been a very mixed pack, hasn't it? But like again, like Andrew said, it is very backcourt heavy, isn't it? It's been a lot of guards in All right. Point guard started off his career with the Detroit Pistons and then came back all the way in 2004 after 10 years or so in the league. To reunite with that on that team with uh, Rashid Wallace, Rich, Richard Hamilton, Chauncey Billups, um, Lindsey Hunter. Th- then went into coaching. Yeah, man, Lindsey Hunter. Nice. You know how much I love that guy, Woods. So yeah, I've got, man, I do. Yeah, uh, at least three Lindsey Hunter jerseys as well. I've got one with the Lakers and a couple with Detroit there. So I was a big fan of. He was actually someone I collected his cards as well, Lindsey Hunter, which is a bit random, but. Yeah. Is he still coaching now, Woods? I know it probably it wasn't going too great for him, his coaching. No, career. it wasn't. When, where was his last coaching gig, Robbie? Do you remember? <sighs> was it like Phoenix or something Phoenix, like that? Phoenix, yeah, I think Phoenix. Yeah. Okay, so it's the Sherman Douglas one. Oh, the Douglas is the gold one, is it? It's the gold Shows one, that? yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's that bit at the top, uh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, so the gold. So, yeah. For, yeah, so there'd be a normal Sherman Douglas card, and then that's the special one with that sort of gold embossed yeah. sort of logo, yep, yep, I guess. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. very cool. That was good. Awesome, guys. Yeah, really enjoyed that. That's an interesting set of cards. And, uh, it is. 
I, I, I'm going to put my vote toward, well, Larry Johnson and the Plastic Man. Like those two cards are winning that pack. Happy to get those two. Charles Freewell is probably a, a lucky as well, pack, yeah. right? You get, are you going to put those? Have you got a folder? You know, you got the. Oh, he does, mate. He does. <laughs> you still got to give ah. me a few of these cards, Woods. Where's my Glenn Rice? I'm still waiting for that. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm going to give you a few. Good stuff. All right. Well, that was fun as always, Woods. So appreciate that, boys. Well, look, that's probably taking us towards um, the end of the show now. So, um, look, I guess just wanted to really thank everyone for tuning in. Um, as I mentioned yep. at the start of the show, please, you know, subscribe to us and and, fill, and, and like us on YouTube um, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Um, I'll also just give a bit of a shout out where we can be found as well there, Woods. Um, so, look, on Twitter, we're at Throwbacks Hoops. Um, you know, look for the content there. If you want to send us any messages or any requests or anything like that, um, on Instagram with throwback dot hoops. Um, and of course our email address, you know, feel free to keep the questions. We might sort of have to answer a few of those questions. We've got a few sort of building up with the viewer yep. questions, but yeah, it's just the throwback hoops podcast at gmail.com. Um, and Woods, why don't you tell the, the audience about your TikTok and also the, the Patreon details as well. Yep. So TikTok, uh, Woody underscore V 83, uh, follow us there. I showcase some of the jerseys that we wear and give us little, give you little snippets from the show. Um, and if you just jump on to my TikTok profile and click the YouTube link, it'll take you to the Throwback Hoops YouTube YouTube channel, and you can see all the suite of the eighteen episodes up to date that we spoke about earlier in the show. Um, and then in terms of Patreon, look, there's a little bit of cost that go into maintaining um, the podcast as, as Andrew and Robbie can attest to. So if you'd like to pledge your support to us, please jump on Patreon, look for three throwback hoops and we appreciate everyone's support. I think we've got a few more Patreon members jumped on board recently. We do and what's just a couple of dollars a week, right? And that'll sort of, you know, allow us to continue to sort of bring out this content and Hey, it might even allow us to buy some more packs of cards too, if we get a little bit of money <laughs> so we can actually increase that. And we don't run out of them. So. Well, even a dollar a week is, is, is you can do so. I mean, whatever you guys can are willing to, to contribute, yeah. we thank you. But and look, as, yeah. as as somebody who who does this as well, it, it, I know how much it means when somebody like throws you a few bucks. It, it's more than the dollars. It's like it's it's validation that you're doing something that people enjoy as well. Absolutely. So. And as we've said before, we've got these these great looking mugs now. So we'll get you know get anyone that, and also our throwback hoops t shirt. So yeah, if you, if you join up to that, you'll certainly get get some of those. So. All right. And look, um, Andrew, mate, I just wanted to really thank you for coming on the show. We've been really looking forward to have you on. It's been great sort of, you know, hearing what you've got to say. Um, just wanted to see if you want to, you know, give yourself a bit of a plug there where you can be found on, you know, socials and everything. And, and maybe give us that, that name of that other podcast. As well. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. I've really enjoyed being on the show. And one of the things I've, wanted, I've been looking forward to is being able to chop it up. Because that's your, Chop that's, it up. Chop it up, man, with Woody. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Hell yeah. So, so I've been looking forward to it. So thanks for having me on, guys. Um, you can find me, obviously, listen to the NBL Pocket Podcast. That's where you can hear me talk NBL basketball. Um, on Twitter, I am just my name, at Andrew Canyon, C-A-N-I-O-N. Um, it used to just be my surname. And then like a few years ago, I got angry with Twitter and deleted my account and lost my good username. So now I've got my full Andrew Canyon. So you find me there. If you want to find me on the web and like all the other stuff I do, it's just Canyon, C-A-N-I-O-N dot O-M-G dot L-O-L. Like, oh my God, lol. Right. That's a bit Very weird. But that's what I've got. And no, then, yeah. So NBL Pocket Podcast. And this one I do where I'm wearing the jersey is Hemispheric Views. Um, and we talk, we talk culture. We talk a bit of tech stuff. Um, we talk media. Um, and it's a good combo between some Australians and an American dude as well. So uh, it's a it's a good show. Bit bit diverse. Um, not a lot of basketball because they won't let me talk on it. But um, NBL Pocket Podcast for that one. But Throwback Hoops, you guys are killing it, man. You got you've had so many guests recently. Like the Timsy episode was amazing. You had you had Gazy. You know, like now you've got me. So I don't know. You've you've probably reached the apex. I'm not sure you can go beyond it, but I'll keep listening to see who you. Can. Hey, and Andrew, we can definitely say as well, mate. You know, from from the bottom of our hearts, Woody. You know, guys like you and Joe doing the show, and sort of other people. You know, Body Liam and those sort of guys have really inspired us to sort of do what we're yeah. doing. So yeah, we wouldn't have sort of even probably gone as far as we've gone sort of without you know you guys giving us that inspiration there. So oh. thank you as well. Oh, you're most welcome. And the thing is, it's the more the merrier. You know, like. It's, a rising tide lifts all boats, all those things, you know, like, so you're doing a great job. You're doing your thing, you know, like it, other people who are listening to this, who have an idea as well, they think they want to do it, do it. Like mm -hmm. what's the Absolutely. worst that can happen. So 
yeah, it's, it's awesome. And yeah, love talking basketball. So thanks for having me, guys. Love, love, chopping, it, love chopping it up with you, man. <laughs> Always welcome, mate. We'd love to have you back at another time. So, all right, we'll really appreci appreciate it there, boys. Um, Woods, obviously, get well soon. Um, I hope, obviously, the finger sort of comes back well. Um, good, look, man. We'll, thanks, buddy. Yeah. We'll do the best we can without you for the for the next few weeks and you'll be out. We're playing pretty well at the moment, so we'll try and continue that form. Yeah, um, Definitely. And yeah, look, everyone enjoy obviously the round of, of NBL games coming up this week, and hopefully, in terms of the NBL, NBA, that our Atlanta Hawks keep winning. Um, any final words, Woods? I'll leave it to you. Yeah, no, the Kings chopped the Wildcats up last week, man. That's all <laughs> I was I was gonna, say. Mate, if I knew you were going to say that, I just would have ended it then. But no. No. Hey, right. Robbie, be, Robbie, yeah. just be careful you don't fall over when you get out of your chair wearing that jersey as well. Yeah, it's a bit like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll try and draw that foul. No, good stuff. <laughs> All right, well, I really appreciate it there, guys. Um, a big shout-out from the Throwback Hoops crew. Um, yeah, I can't wait to do it all again next week. Peace Thanks, out. Guys. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Andrew. guys.